Hey, welcome to Unfinished Stitches, uh, where our channel is about uh, cross stitch and all the other crafty stuff that we've been up to. My name is Bonnie. And my name is Madison. And today we are filming floss tube number 28. And today is April 5th, 2023. Yes, it is. And I have on a very warm shirt. It's cold. Uh, it was it was 19 degrees this morning. It feels like 12 this morning. It's warmed up a tiny bit. But, and there's snow on the ground. Well, I am in a short sleeve t-shirt and shorts. And it is currently 84 degrees uh, here in um, Baltimore, Maryland. So we're on opposite ends of the seasons oh, here. Yes, we are. <laughs> Well, Colorado just does not want to get on board with spring right now. <laughs> does not. Yes. Does well, not. Well, welcome, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for joining us. And we love sharing our crafty stuff with you guys. So thank you for coming. Yes, we're excited. We've got lots to share with you today. We do. Um, we and do. so we also wanted to say thank you to everyone who joined our live stitch that we did um, back in the middle of March, a couple weeks ago, it was so much fun. We had about a hundred people, a little over a hundred people join us and it was fun to work on our projects and then chat with people. A lot of people asked questions. It was really fun. We had people from all over the world actually join, which was really amazing. So thank well, you to everyone who joined. Yes. It was super fun, super fun. And it was really fun to talk to everyone from all over the U S all over the world, we appreciate everyone that did come and join us. Yes, it was lots of fun. And so we've decided that we're going to do another one um, here in April. Um, we're going to be doing it on Sunday, April 16th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, so come bring your stitching and a coffee or tea, whatever you like to drink and hang out with us. Um, we did it for a little over an hour hour and a half or so so we got we didn't get very much stitching done but hopefully everybody else did <laughs> we were too busy answering questions and chatting which was so much fun um yeah, so much fun so be sure to come and join us for this next live stitch yes please do um let's see we just wanted to give out a couple shout outs to some other floss tubers that mentioned us in their floss tube and we very much appreciate that we had, um, let's see, Corey Creates in St. Louis, um, who is super fun to watch. I went and watched her, and I always think of Meet Me in St. Louis, the, that movie, when I hear of St. Louis. Madison, do you remember going up into the arc of the arch? I do. St. Louis when we traveled back and forth across I-70 there. I do. I was wow. scared to death of that thing because he doesn't like heights. Were you scared up there, or do you remember? I don't, I don't think I was scared, but I don't like heights either. Yeah. Um, but if I'm not like, if there's like a railing and I'm away from the railing, I'm okay. But like, if oh. I have to be like right up to a railing, then I'm not okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. So well, anyway, we shout out to her saying thank you. And um, let's see, we had Moonshine Stitchery. We had 502 Stitcher, who is also an Ada Stitcher. And she started up her journal um, and she likes to do bigger things on bigger projects on Ada. Uh, so she doesn't let, you know, the, that stop her. Um, mm -hmm. And then we also want to say uh, thanks to Gammy Stitcher for mentioning us on um, her floss tube as well. So thank you to those people. Um, let's see. And yes, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. You're <laughs> I was just going to say, please like and subscribe. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. We really appreciate your support. Thank you. We do. Um, and we also wanted to say thank you to Jam Jams. Yes. Um, she is a subscriber and she has been recently going back and watching like all the backlog of the videos from our channel. Um, and she has been commenting kind words on every single one. Um, she must be tired of us now because she keeps, uh, she's been watching all of them. She binged us, but we wanted to say special thank you to her um, for being, you know, so kind and watching our videos and always having something very nice to say. So thank you. Yeah, she, she did always have good words for us. <laughs> she did. Yes. Um, let's see. A couple, another comment that some, a comment that when somebody made, Kathy in Oklahoma, she made this comment and made me laugh. She says, 
that her hob or her basement looks like a Hobby Lobby. And I just think we can all relate to that. <laughs> it was so funny. Anyway. I think we all are like that. It's I wish I had Hobby Lobby space to organize everything because no. mine's like crammed in my tiny, you know, two bedroom apartment here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have, I have enough space, but I want more. I can fill it. The more space I have, the more I just fill it up. But I, she, that's also, true. she also made a comment about how hard it is to find over dyed eight or hand dyed Ada. And I agree with her. It It is harder to find over dyed or hand dyed Ada. Mm -hmm. Um, and I, I think the reason I have some choices is because over the past like two years, every time I found any kind of aid account that I even remotely liked, I just bought it, whether I had a project for it or not, which, you know, it, it, it sort of seems like, yeah, I shouldn't buy it unless I have a project for it. But yet at the same time, now I have a little stash that, yeah. you know, I can go to and pull from. So but along those lines, I did this past week, did some dyeing of some Ada, and I am going to offer this up for sale. It was a lot of work to do, but it, it was definitely fun, um, but it was a lot of work. So I don't know how dyers of any kind of fabric or linen can how they get up with their formula for colors because these are just one-offs I, I can never promise to make the same color again but I'm going to put up a video probably in the next day or two um, offering these up for sale if anybody's interested it will just be about that um, and there'll be instructions there uh, on how to go about that hi Apollo hi do you want to come up and say hi I know all my stuff is in your way Come on up here. Oh my goodness. Hi, buddy. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Settle down. Gosh. He loving the cookie today. All he wants is his cookie. I know. Okay. Uh, he's done with you and you've gone. He's done and Apollo says hi and now he's out the door. Oh, he heard oh, There you. he goes. Did you see I'm gonna he close looked back and then. Yes. He looked back and I was like, are you, are you going to give me more? Okay, I'm out. Never mind. I'm going to close the door because there's a lot of noise going on out there in the world. Okay. <laughs> in the world. Right. Okay. And so also along those lines, um, my Etsy shop, Curly Girl Crafter, I had several people asking me for the scissors that Madison and I both use. They're the easy hook and snip. They have the little hook on them. Um, they were out of stock for a while, but they're back in mm -hmm. stock. So I just wanted to make a note of that. Okay. Good. Well, and then there's one thing that I wanted to mention too, before we get into our stitching. Okay. Um, I also have an Etsy shop and I have been designing, I design stickers and um, things for my bullet journal um, and other planners. And so I have those available on my Etsy shop. And I've also been designing some t-shirts for cross-stitching people because there's just not a lot of options for cute cross-stitching t-shirts. So I have um, those available on my Etsy shop. My Etsy shop is called PH Doodling because um, I like to doodle. So we'll link it below for you guys to go ahead and check it out. Um, and I had fun designing them. They're all mine. I, I designed them and drew them all. So I hope, you know, maybe you like them. Um, they were fun to do. So I wanted to give us some more options because there's just not very many options for there's cute cross-stitching. Um, and I did a couple of crochet ones as well, since I'm now a crocheter too. So I thought they would be fun. So yes. let's go ahead and check we're those gonna out. Get, we're we're going to get ourselves one ordered up. I want to, I want a yeah. couple of ones so I can wear them anyway, because yeah. you're right. There aren't very many cute ones available that I don't know. I mean, I guess there no, are out there. But there are some, but I, I, I do what I wanted. <laughs> Yeah. And Madison is a very good artist. She can do, she does really good doodling and drawing. And, um, she used to have a buju. Is that how you say it? A buju? Bujo? Yeah. Bullet journal. Bujo. Bullet, yeah. A YouTube channel that she did drawings like in live. And so, um, anyway, she does, she's a very good drawer. Well, thank you. As for, he, well, yes, I can't draw, but you certainly can draw. I, uh, it, I it's a fun. All right. So, all right. Do you have any stitching to share? 
Oh, lots of stitching. I have two finishes to share today. Hey. And one of them, I guess technically three. Um, the first one is I started and finished this from the last time of our video. So you guys haven't seen this at all. Um, so I was very happy. It's called the Spring Salt Boxes from Plum Street Samplers. And it's from her salt shaker um, collection. And so she has one for each of the four seasons. And so I did the one for spring. So this is my fully finished object. Um, and so she has two patterns in this pattern. There's two little salt boxes. So these are each individual patterns. Um, and I put them on this cute tin with some fun foliage um, because I wanted to make them interchangeable because the idea would be that I would use the same tin for all the different seasons and change them, um, you know, as the seasons progress. So I made these individual little, I don't know, finishes <laughs> with magnets on the back. Uh, so that they can easily stick to my metal tin. And I mounted them on some sticky board. And this was the first one. Love it. It was so fun to stitch, but it was quite a bit of stitching. The house was huge. It almost looks like full coverage. Okay. So yeah. The door again. And here's the second one. So I'm very, very happy with how they turned out. Um, it was really fun to do. They're very, very, very cute. And there's so are you going to do the other season sets that she has then? Yes. So my plan would be to kind of try to do all of them this year. Since there are only four, that means I just have to get one done like every three months. Um, so I need to start on the summer ones because summer is It's going to be here before I yes. know it. Right. But this was like exactly how I envisioned it. So I was so happy um, yes. with how it turned out it's so I, pretty. I stitched these on 14 count beige so oh okay very good I it's so so pretty I just love it me I love too it. I absolutely love it it's out in my living room so I get to see it all the time <laughs> well and it's kind of cool because now you have that whole thing and you can go ahead and finish the other ones and now you have somewhere to just put them right away and you don't have to go find something what? else that was my plan. And then, cause I've always thought it was so smart of people who did like magnets and stuff to make stuff interchangeable for each season, instead of having to frame every piece each time exactly, or, or buy a whole new planter each Some... time or, 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 or item to put them on. Yeah. Yeah. And so I love the magnet idea and I bought a big pack of magnets from Hobby Lobby. Um, I did have to use quite a few, but just so it would sit evenly on. Yeah. Cause it was kind of heavy but it worked out really really well it wasn't hard at all um to do so I know that when we've done embroidery typically we had a pattern that had a bicycle on it do you remember and there was one for each season and that mm -hmm. frame I had a big black frame that it fit in and I had each one mounted on some kind of like sticky board type stuff and I actually it didn't have glass on it I took the glass out and Every season, I would take it out of that frame and put the new season in. So I didn't have to frame each one of them because who wants yeah. frames? And then who wants to store the other three when you're not using one? I mean, I think that's very smart to do. Yeah, I do too. I, I kind of do that anyway with a lot of my stuff that's like the same yeah. size roughly. Um, but I think it's a great idea to try to maximize what you have so you're not like you know, have all this stuff, like you're saying to store and also just to go buy in general, a little right. more economical. <laughs> yeah. So okay. yeah, I was, it was great. It was a fun little project. It was a little nerve wracking, like mounting them to get them because they're square on there, but I could move it a little after that's, yeah. that's the great thing about the sticky board is I was able to lift it a little to kind of move it and it was still, you know, worked just fine. So yeah. Well, and that was my yeah. first time using the sticky board. So very oh, easy okay. to do. Yes. Yeah. I like, the, I like the sticky board. I think it's great. It's great. I'm, I'm a yeah. big fan. Good job. Good job. Thank you. And then my other one, that's like not really a finish from this year, but it's already, it's done. And that's why I thought I'd show you. Yes. Um, is this one from Lottie Da. It's called Briar Rabbit. And it's not really finished. I just kind of have it um, mounted on this little easel here, but I absolutely love this little bunny rabbit. He's so cute. He is so, so I have cute. This little easel. Um, and what I did was I have, I just have it like taped with 
sphincters too. <laughs> my that, one's not on, that one's not it's on support. Okay. Yeah, it's not very dangerous <laughs> tape. Okay. I um didn't have enough sticky board because my Hobby Lobby only had so much and I bought all of it. And I don't think they keep a lot in stock. So that was the plan, but I used it all for the other project. So I need to buy more sticky board. But it works just fine. Um, so I that's another thing. I use this easel and I interchange pieces on it throughout the season um to keep it. And I have some like oh. fake foliage here to liven it up a little. And the nice thing about your easel there is that it has it makes a border around whatever you put on there. So even if it's a smaller piece or a larger piece, it doesn't matter what size your piece is, you can still mount it on that easel and exactly. it, it looks great. Do you know what I mean? Like like yep. that's not that obviously does not have the same border all the way around it, but it looks fabulous. Yeah. And I I put smaller pieces on here as well. Um, and this was like an easel I think I got on sale at like Hobby Lobby from like the clearance section or something like that. Um, but I, I use a lot of this like reusable yeah. stuff because I, yeah, it just it works well for me. So those are my nice kind of three finishes to share. I love that bunny one. I, I need to stitch that one. And you do. It. it was fun. It was a quick and easy one too. Um, do you have any finishes to share? I have, I have one finish. It's not fully finished. I'm working on it, but it's not fully finished. It is um, antique bunnies and baskets from Shakespeare's Peddler. I started this last spring, but I didn't quite have it finished. So I got it finished. Oops. And here it is. So um, I've made some kind of accounting mistake in here somewhere. Don't remember because I did it last year. So <laughs> had that. And then the letters in the word basket, baskets, um, I should have done, and I didn't realize it. I had, I started stitching the letters and I'm like halfway through the letters. And then I realized that they are done up as I think eyelets. Oh, Algerian eyelets. Yes. And I was kind of bummed because I oh, told that's you. that's a bummer. Those I are was. so fun. Oh. Yes. Yes. Well, they're done in eyelets is what it says. And so I was oh. super bummed because in the picture, I could see they look so pretty, but I had already cr did the crosses. And so, oh, well, and I'm getting ready to fully finish this. So I did iron my SF 101 on the back, which you can get from Hobby Lobby. And I went ahead and I stitched down some lace that I'm going to have at the bottom of my pillow. So I'm going to make it into a pillow. So next floss tube, I'll have it finished. And then this is my um, fa whoops, fabric that I'm going to use um, that I'm putting on the back. So that's very. I, oh, actually, I, love it. I went ahead and put a piece of SF 101 on the back of this fabric because this is really thin fabric. I almost think it's like a cotton lawn. And so it's, um, mm -hmm. it's pretty. so I just didn't quite get it together for you guys, but it'll be together here, hopefully tomorrow or today so it's it's so cute and I love the lace it looks so beautiful good job that's how she she had put a piece of lace on the bottom and so I thought oh I'm gonna do that I love that did you sew that on there I did I was gonna glue it and I'm like oh and so you can see it's just you know okay. I just sewed the top of it down with some matching thread on my sewing machine um so that that way this side over here the sides will be in the seam of the pillow mm -hmm. oh, it's gonna be so cute Yes, it will be cute. Thank you. Okay. All right. So now do you want to talk about our journals and our goals? Oh, yes. I'll go first. Okay. You go first. Here's my journal, my crafty journal um, that I've been using to write all my stuff down. Um, my, I'll sit, give you my stats for March. Okay. I had two starts and two finishes, which that's what I just showed you. My two salt block salt box houses I started and finished those and then I worked on nine projects total and I stitched 25 days out of the month out of 31 and I stitched a total of 78 hours nice I still am my the day the project and then the hours that I do each day right um I met all my goals that I had set and touched all the projects that I had planned on so I'm very happy with my progress from March. You should be. So you stitched one hour more than last month, actually, right? Yeah. Yes. Because didn't you yeah, just go to an hour? 
Yeah, I thought I was thinking so. Uh huh. Yeah, good memory. Good job. <laughs> that's that's good. That's that's a lot. You should be proud. It is a lot. I am very proud. Um, and I just I still love keeping track of everything. Um, I I, I love do. it, but I you know, I like to write stuff down. Um, but see, these are all my goals over here, and then my my log of the date, the project, and then the time. Um, so I love to write everything. Down. And then <laughs> as soon as I complete one of my goals, I'm like, I gotta go check it out. Check, um, check, check. So I'm very happy with how it turned out. I did start to kind of lose a little motivation towards the end of the month to do cross stitching. I don't know if I was just extra tired because I've, you know, started to get back to my normal schedule and everything since I've been feeling much better, or if I just have been like uninspired to cross stitch. So I was crocheting a lot more towards the end of the month. Um, but I was wondering if you guys have also had any like lack mo of motivation to cross stitch. Um, and what, like, what do you do when you kind of get into like a funk of when you want to do something crafty, but you don't know what you want to work on. Cause like, that was the cycle I was in. It's like, well, I want to do something, but none of these projects are sparking inspiration for me. So I just like, didn't do anything. Right. Um, so I, I did like it like that because I, it was multiple days that I didn't stitch where at the end of the month, towards the beginning, I was stitching like every day. Right. Um, so let me know, let us know in the comments, like what, you know, what motivates you? How do you kind of get around that when that happens um, to you? And you kind of just like, don't know what to work on. Like literally I was like, I don't want to work on that. I don't want to work on that. And I, it's all the projects I love. So right. I think it might've just been like me, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I hate when I get like that. I'm sure everybody must have lulls like that where they're like, I don't know. I want to be creative. I don't know. Nothing sounds good. I don't know. It could also be partly due to the weather. You know, it's like, yeah. at least for out here, I know a lot of us out here are like really fed up with the weather and we're restless and we're kind of cranky about it, to be quite honest with you. But yeah, I don't know how other people motivate to I don't know what I do either, really. I, I, but I, I fall into that too. Okay, so here's my my crafty journal, and let's see. I, I of course do mine differently than Madison because I do what works for me. Whoops, that's April. So for March, you know, or for for any month, I just have the dates listed, and then I kind of write what I what I worked on, if I cross stitched or quilted or crocheted, what have you. And I was creative every day except for one, two, three days. One, two, three days, uh, maybe four days. It looks like four days I wasn't crafty. So I think that's okay. Even if I'm just crafty, you know, 10, 15 minutes with something with either crochet or, or whatever, um, I think that counts just, just to give your mind a little bit of a reset. Um, I did pretty good with my wool. So I highlight if I met my goals. Um, so you can see I did really well. My quilting tops, which you guys, I've told you before, I don't know how many quilt tops I have that need to be actually quilted. I have, looks like I have 49 quilt tops that need to be quilted. Um, and so I have made no progress on that. I've had the same top out for three months that I have not. Are you, am I boring you? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, you're not boring me. I love hearing about your goals. I love goals. I'm, I love them. Just, I'm just kidding. Um, so I am lacking in my quilt top situation. Um, anyway, that's my, okay. You made progress in other ones. It's not like you're I doing did. nothing. I did, but I, I, I need to figure out how to motivate for that because I have a lot of tops that need to be quilted and I would love to use them and have them done. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I, I go through spurts with that, just like anything. But my crochet goal was really out of whack. I, so, you know, I'm a new crocheter. I don't know anything. So I, I put down here that I was going to crochet 24 blocks this month. <laughs> well, I, start, I, I quickly realized that was like not obtainable and unrealistic. So I, I changed it to 12 so that I can make my goal and highlight it. And so I, I did do 12 blocks and I'll share those later. But um, so anyway, so Madison and I both really like our lists and our goals and organizing. So, you know, organizing yeah. some people, it's not for everyone. Some people, it's not their thing. It's definitely my jam. 
<laughs> Me too. And I, we both also have like a planner that we use for like work and personal. This is just our crafty planner. So like I have two planners. <laughs> Same. Um, like we both do. <laughs> some people might think I'm absolutely crazy, but I love my planners. <laughs> Me too. Me too. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So we did want to say thank you for all of those that responded to our question last month about um, your cross-stitch journey. It was really fun to read about everyone's cross-stitch journeys. Everyone's, you know, were different. Some of them were the same. Uh, it was very, very fun to read them and appreciate that you guys shared that with us. We read, we both read all of them and yes. um, we tried to answer any questions. We're running out of time here. Let's see. Okay. So anyway, we really appreciate um, everybody's stories. And if you've asked a question and we haven't answered it either on a vi another video or in the comments, please ask the question again. We're, we're not purposely ignoring you. So um, there's just a lot of comments. And sometimes with two of us looking at them, we're like, did you answer that? And then if we've looked at it and hearted it, it, it like goes away from the- goes away. It's it so goes annoying. away from our list. <laughs> so- just please ask again if you have a question that you're asking. Okay. Um, Apollo, how many times do I have to close the door? Thank you. Oh, somebody whoever, got it for you. Whoever did that for me, thank you. <laughs> Meanwhile, my dog is just passed out over here. I'll have to, we'll have to insert a picture of Gus taking a nap yes. on my chair because he is passed out over here and Apollo's just back and forth, back and forth. I know, look at him. <laughs> opposite. And he doesn't like when you shut the door. That's the problem. And so if I, and if I lock the door, he stands there because he can open the door and he stands there goes like this on the door handle, nonstop <laughs> until I come over and open it. So I can't lock it. I mean, it would seem like a simple solution to just lock the door, but it's not. <laughs> but then we've got Gus. So we, we're going to have to insert a Gus picture. Yes. We'll put one in there. Um... We will. We'll put one in right along here somewhere so we can <laughs> see Mr. Gus Gus. Okay. Um, so let's see, what do we got going here? Oh, Miss Pamela in Pennsylvania asked us how we kit something together. And she also wanted to know how to do a floss strap. So, yes. And so we thought we'd briefly share kind of how we kit things. This is just how we do it. Um, right. I think for the most part, like, I think you and I both mom, we have patterns that are just like, in our binders and then we have patterns that have like thread kitted with them and then when we're ready to like actually start something we take that pattern that has the thread kitted and we pick fabric for it if we haven't like specially ordered fabric for it and then like we start it and so we generally for small projects don't buy you know new floss for every small project we often just pull from our stash um because like if you only need like one strand from something it's not worth it to buy like a whole new skein of floss. Whereas with a bigger project, we will go out and buy, you know, floss specifically for that project. Um, and this is from experience that I've had where I started a project and I used an old skein of a gray. I was working on a whale and I ran out of floss. I went to the store, got the same number, came back, started stitching, and it was not the same because the skein I had was older and they weren't from the same dye lot. And so I actually just abandoned the project and threw it away because I had stitched so much in that old color, like the old dye lot, that the new dye lot just did not match up. Um, so we always make sure to buy like enough for a bigger project so that you never run into that problem. Right. Um, so that's kind of our experience, but it kind of just depends again on the size of the project and then, you know, kind of your preference. Exactly. Exactly. And you, you and I do those things all the same. Um, and yeah. so he's going to go ahead and walk through how we actually do a floss drop. Um, some people wind their floss on bobbins. Madison and I used to do that. That's what we used to do all the time. Could not mm -hmm. figure out why in the world you want to put thread or floss <laughs> on a floss drop. Didn't get it. I'm like, why? I, I don't get understand it. the benefit of this. And to me, me neither. Somebody explained it to me. So 
we're going to explain it really quick. Um, so you have your skein, pull off your pieces of paper, the piece with that has the number on it. That's the side you want to start pulling your um, floss from. Of course, I don't have any glasses on to see where the end is. Just grab some glasses. There you go. There we go. Okay, here we go. Here it is. So you just kind of want to hold it loosely and kind of keep your end where you can find it easily. And then just unpull the whole thing. So you're holding it loosely. You want to un just undo the skein. And most of the time, it, it really does come undone um, without a knot. If you pull it from the end with the the numbers, the numbers. So then you're going to take both ends and put them together. And you're basically folding this in half. Okay. And so I'm going to pull, I'm, I'm, hold, I'm holding on to my ends and I'm just finding the other end that's going to be folded. Okay. So then I bring that together. So I have my ends and my loop, one loop. I'm going to fold it in half again. I'm still holding my beginning ends and then I'm Folding it in half, and I'm going to fold it in half one more time. Okay. And so now I have my ends and I have one big loop. So I'm going to take my one big loop. You're going to take your floss drop piece, which, you know, sometimes I have pretty ones that I've bought. They there's all different kinds. If I don't have any, sometimes I make them out of cardstock, whatever, whatever you have, whatever you want to do. Like I said, there's some real pretty ones out there. So you're going to feed your loop through and um, you're just going to, you know, have your loop go through mm -hmm. pull your, your whole thing through like that. Okay. And I've written my number on here. So I know what it is. And then on the <laughs> other end, these are a pair of my favorite scissors. They're rabbits. Whoops. Aren't they so cute? Oh, they're so cute. <laughs> I know. So then you're just going to cut all the loops that are here so that you have an end or a, you know, there, there's no loop there. So then you have your, your floss is dropped. Madison and I both, oh, I don't have a needle. <laughs> Why would I have a needle? Uh, oh, please. Oh, here we go. In my tin, of course. Oh, in your tin. We love our tin. Oh, yeah. How handy. <laughs> I always have all my tins have like so much junk in them all the time. You have a lot of stuff in there. This is like extra thread for a project in case I need it, in case I run out. Oh, anyway, so the beauty of this is you're going to um, unhook one piece of thread. Let's see if I can do it. Hold on. I have to hold it down here where I can see it better. Okay. Hard to do on camera. Okay, here we go. So I'm just gonna hook one loop, and if I kind of pull slowly, it pulls out one strand. You can straighten this back up. You're ready to go again. So I've pulled one piece of thread with my needle, and Madison and I both stitched with two strands of thread over our Ada. That's what we like. So if you fold this in half, you take your two ends and thread your needle with these two ends, then you have your, you know, 18 inch piece of thread that you can stitch with. Yep. And the other thing we do is we use um, rings and you can buy these on Amazon or at the office supply place. Um, and so then we thread our floss on here like this. Okay. I hope you understand that. If you have any questions, just ask. Okay. Did that make sense, Madison? I think that made sense. Okay. All right. Good job. But I don't know, you know, because you know how to read me. Not everybody does. Okay. That's true. Very good. All right. Um, oh. um, and then we just had a few other things we wanted to just mention from some comments from some viewers. Um, and the first one was from Leanne Roberts, 9019. She loves the ballpoint needles um, that we like to use. And Mom has those available in her Etsy shop. We just love the ball. And so glad other people like it. Cause I thought nobody yeah. stitched with those. So I didn't either. I mean, they're I, I feel like they're kind of pricey because you only get two needles in the pack, but yeah. I love they're them. Worth I they're worth yeah. it. Yeah. 
I 100% stitch with those all the time for cross stitch. Um, let's see, Becky Pew 8124. <laughs> she, I had to laugh at this. She says her fabric is so big. It's like a bed sheet. <laughs> you can relate to that. You know, that red work one that, um, oh. The the Bristol sampler that we both are doing that's re that's red work that it, it it's I, like a bed sheet. <laughs> if I, I ever, can't if I ever finish it, I don't know. I'm not gonna have it framed because I won't be able to. It's gonna it. be like a tapestry. Hey, you know, <laughs> it will be a tapestry. I'll have to buy a poster frame for it. Yes, that's why that's I'm pointing at you. Yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yes, <laughs> like. Yeah, I could totally relate to that. And then of course Ginger's mom. I actually. This is kind of a funny reconnect from um, my beginning quilting days back when Madison was little, little, little. Um, anyway, we've, re re we've reconnected. And so my friend Ginger, her mom, I sent her mom some scissors and she sent me this pretty little spring thank you card. And I just wanted to show it because look how pretty it is. I am so looking forward to spring here in Colorado. <laughs> So I just had to share the card because it's it's all springy and pretty. So anyway, it is. I know. All right. How about some whips, Madison? I think so. Do you want to go first yes, or should I go first? Okay. Doesn't matter. I'll go first if you want. Okay. okay. In my Christmas bag. So this is my monthly project called Glitter Village. And I'm this is not a, the best picture, but it's just... It is what it is. So I've finished the whole top row and I'm doing one Yay. block a month with my friends, Linda and Yvonne. And we've, oops, sorry, Apollo. So this month was so much better than last month. Last month, as you recall, my middle block, pink block there was um, cursed and I had <laughs> issues with it. It was a disaster and it has wrong things in it. But my block this month, went just smoothly and it was great. So um, I, I do like this project. I'm kind of over the white. There is no way I could ever stitch this whole project all at once because it's got too much white. Um, and you can see I've already started my March block down here, but uh, I, I am loving this. And I would like to tell you this fabric which, oh, let me get my, <laughs> do you remember? No, I don't remember because it's one that I've never heard of actually. And I don't even know where I got it. See, this is like one of those that I just picked up somewhere and I don't know, like, I don't even know where it came from. It's, um, it's a 16 count Ada under the sea color is properly primitive. So I have no idea where I got this. Don't know. Well, but, it's turning out beautiful. It looks so sweet. And I can't believe you have a whole row done. Look at what your goal setting did. It did that. <laughs> it did because, and I think some of these bigger projects get overwhelming when you look at it and you think, okay, I'm going to work on this. Well, you work on it and you might do like a tree because you're like overwhelmed. But if I don't look at it and say, okay, if I could do this block in this month, mm -hmm. that's more attainable for me. Than to tell myself, oh, I'm going to work on this this month. Well, then I just might like just do a tree or something and go, oh, I worked on it. I'm done. Because I do that for sure. Exactly. Anyway, that's my progress on my glitter village. I love it. Well, along with that is my snow village, which I'll share next. I copied you guys and decided that I was going to do a block a month as well, but I wanted to do this um, pattern instead and this is snow village and I started um, down here in the corner and I don't have a, I have three done um, so I don't quite have a row mine has more blocks has than yours four does. across and mine has three across yes yes so mine's gonna take me the entire year but that's okay um so I have the first three done. Let me get it up here so I can show you. I'm so excited. So I worked on this greenhouse over here. Um, it's oh. the ice creamery. Oh, look at the ice cream in the window. I love that. 
oh, I, I know I love it it's adorable so I've got these three done and I love it I'm with you though because like mine has a lot of white yeah you have like, a lot too I don't want to stitch all that like over and over and over again I know but, like once a month it's totally fine right right it's so and I, I I really enjoy stitching on this um that fabric is perfect and did you is that called called for this is the called for yes it's called french con country french rain mm -hmm. and i'm doing 16 count um but they they use the linen um but thankfully they also had the same color in ada right. so i was able to order this online um and i'm glad i did because the white shows up so well it does um i couldn't imagine doing this on like a brown i just don't like a light tanny you know yeah. typical kind of color because otherwise it just wouldn't show up so I'm very happy with how it turned out and I'm proud that I've continued to keep up with it and I'm ready to stitch the next block that's right. what's interesting each month I'm like oh I'm ready like right if I just really do my block of the months like this at the beginning of the month to ensure that I get them done um and I think that's kind of that been your yes your um move as well so yes yeah it because the whole month has gone by and then it's a new month and it's like, yes. Okay. I'm going to do so my, I like, yes. Yeah. I try to like space it out a little bit. Um, so I'm not doing them all like back to back or whatever. Right. So yeah, I'm happy with the progress I've made so far. You should be. Yay. Okay. So my next one is another bunny project. I have several bunny projects. It's in my bunny bag, which <laughs> love my bunny bag. Okay. So this project is a project this is my oldest whip from scattered seed samplers and it's harvest hairs pin keep okay and i started this when you started cross stitching and this is when i came back to cross stitch and found all this linen stuff and thought oh gosh well i guess i have to do all this linen stuff like everyone else and I quit, except for there were two projects, and I still have them both, that mm -hmm. are not finished, that I did on Ada, that I did not get rid of. I threw away all the other projects that I had started on linen because I couldn't do it. All it did was frustrate me, and I thought, this is stupid. But I kept the two projects that were on Ada, but I stopped stitching still at any point. So back in 2017, and I put the start date on here. So this is one instance I kind of like putting the start date on. I don't mind putting the start date on, but that's just me because I'll probably, you know, after all our channels called unfinished stitches. So how many <laughs> am I ever going to finish? Right. So anyway, oops, let me take off that big chunk of hair or hair thread. Thread. <laughs> so I stitched all the little bunnies and I started the big bunny and I put a little bit of the grass in. So I still haven't made a ton of progress, um, but I did pull it out. It was one of my goals to work on it. Uh, mm -hmm. so I might put this back in my working bucket this, um, next this month. month. Yeah. Those, the, the little bunnies at the bottom are so yeah. cute. Aren't they like, cute? They're adorable. They're along. They are cute. So <laughs> it'll make a cute little pillow if I, you know, get it done. But see how I do, like, if I don't tell myself I have to finish this this month, but I just have to work on it. I just did the bunny and, and then I was done. Oh, my little, my little bunny scissors go in here. So I got to oh. put those back in here. Yeah, I got to put those back. Yeah, I got to put those back in here. Okay, my next project is in one of my favorite project bags. I love that project bag. Me too. This is um, from Silver Creek Samplers. This is Liberty Hill Farms. And so here's the pattern. Oh, yes, I have the pattern here too. I was going to hold it up for you and I forgot. <laughs> That's okay. And so I had started this. I'm sorry, Gus is barking. Somebody's in the hallway from our apartment. <laughs> Not too bad, actually. Okay. Um. So here I started this, I think in maybe last year I don't I haven't been I think it was last year um and this is stitched on 14 count uh milk and honey 
And so I worked on this a little bit. I was hoping to finish it. So all I have left is um, this kind of scallopy border is just repeated on the bottom. Um, I so I just have to do that. I finished the house and then the 1776 this month. So I was just happy that I worked on it a little bit. Yeah, um, that, that house is a lot little stitching there and the 1776. You did good. It is. I really love this. And the colors are really sweet. Like I, I'm very, very happy with how it turned out. Um, I was hoping to finish it, but I did not. But it maybe I'll good. work on it. This it's was fun. my holiday um, item that I worked on this month. Okay. I, I, uh, I think you should be proud of what you got done. It's looking good. Thank you. I like it. It was fun. And I love that Ada is so soft. It's just like really smooth to stitch on. So I really like it. <laughs> is that picture this plus? You didn't say much. Um, I know it's milk and honey. Is it, It's either picture this plus or fiber on a whim. I don't know. It's fiber on a whim, milk and honey. Fiber on a whim. Okay. Okay. So my next project is a Christmas one that I started last year and it's Barbara Anna designs. Whoops. Um, it was for Christmas mystery. I didn't start it this last Christmas, but the Christmas before. And I'm trying to work on it. It's one of my holiday pieces. I work on for at least one day a month. And I, I did, I pulled it out and worked on it for one day. Um, and I was hoping to make more progress, but I, I didn't. I worked on her hair, all this purple stuff in here and how mm -hmm. it swirls up into the mountain here. So it swirls all the way over here. So, so I, after I get the purple on, then I'll have to fill it in with some of the white. So okay. I, I just really want it to be done. And I, I, I was hoping to get all the purple part done this month and then just fill in with the white the next month. But, oh, well. It at looks least, really pretty though. I, at least I worked on it. I was quite impressed how her face came out. The shading on her face last month. Like, Amazing. As I was stitching it, I thought this isn't going to look right. And look, <laughs> look how the shading came out. It totally came out just fine. This is it a did. plush. Pix, picture this plus uh, tarnish is the name of this fabric. And I, I love the color of this. I actually am stitching uh, a fallish piece with turkeys on it on this color. I love the color, but this particular piece, and I don't know if it's, I don't know what it is, but I, it's really tight and the needle just does not, it's really easy to break in the middle. My, my, my needle goes down sometimes in the middle of like a thread. I, not I know. It doesn't, cool. it's not real easy. It's really hard for me to work on this at nighttime because I really have to be able to see the holes because it doesn't want to, doesn't want to go in or something. So yeah. I'm really over stitching on this piece because of the, the fabric. Um, I, so I, 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 get that. Huh? I get that. Sometimes yeah. certain fabrics are just not fun. The and needle it, just like it's, doesn't want to It's go. a 14 count too, by the way, this is 14. That's shocking. So, you know, obviously over dye shrinks a little bit. Um, it just yeah. does. That's, that's what happens. But I don't know. The needle just doesn't want to go through it. I've tried a smaller needle. It just it doesn't it just work. Pushes. Huh? That doesn't work. No, a smaller it just, needle? just doesn't want to go through. I mean, it so goes hard. through, but it's very easy to get off. And it's, it, it's very easy to split through. So I'm kind of ready for this one to be done because of the, that situation. Well, keep chugging along. You'll get it done soon. Okay. Yes, my lady. <laughs> um, the next one I have to share is tomato. There, wait a minute. Sitting there in your t-shirt and shorts. Oh, while I have on like a Patagonia, like heavy duty sweatshirt. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Okay, go ahead. I don't I'll know what to tell you. You live I'll... in the frozen tundra. What do you want? Okay. <laughs> All right. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. The next one I worked on was Tomato Dame by Plum Street Sampler. And this was one of my 12 by 12 that I started. Um, Good job for 12 by 12. Thank you. Um, and I am stitching this on 14 count antique blue. And so this is a little lady 
um and she's holding a sign I so I need to finish filling in her dress but I worked on her face and her little her little sign there so I didn't do very much but I worked on this like one night um it's gonna be really sweet I just I, I didn't work on it anymore so, so so this picture shows up backwards than hers because it's reversed on here on the camera just so you know but yeah anyway yes but anyway so that she was looks so funny time. stand there with her sign I know well, I need to finish the sign I again just gave I ended for the night so <laughs> she looks like she's holding like a stick or like an it looks like it should be like an axe that's what I was thinking she's gonna beat somebody yeah kind of beat all those crows okay yeah so that was the one I worked okay so this is what I worked on here's my project bag I forced oh, the dog. look at the doggies I this was my um piece that I worked on during our live stitch Jackson. Oh, yes and I didn't get very far <laughs> I always have high expectations of what I'm going to get done and doesn't ever happen, but that's okay. Um, so here's my piece and it's like, it's getting there. So to prepare for the live, I went ahead and stitched this pot of flowers so that I didn't have to count anything during the live. All I had to do was fill in the pumpkin stuff. And so, you know, me, I'm thinking, Oh yeah, I'm gonna stitch this flower pot. I'm gonna get this whole pumpkin filled in. <laughs> the whole pumpkin, yeah. What? I mean, I I did fill in like a little bit over here, but I just, you know, in my thought, oh, I better get this flower pot done so oh, I can I know. work over here and not have to count. Yeah, right. But this one's fun. I love to feel this one too because it's it's really like this is a lot of fill in. So it is a lot of fill in. I just have to finish that, and I have to finish a couple more strips of um I don't know what this is wheat mm -hmm. or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, I have I have Gus. Oh. He's come to say hello. He's woken up from his nap. Oh, he is right here. Yes. Oh my gosh! Look how cute <laughs> you are. Tiny. You need some oh. attention. Oh, okay. No. Get up the from his nap now. He's ready to play. <laughs> This dog my dog is up looking to see your dog oh my goodness oh gosh oh I know he he hears him and he got up off the chair to so he could see <laughs> okay okay, okay he, he was back now a little tail <laughs> um, so the next one I think that's the first time we've seen him like I know he, well, he's always asleep oh, like sleep. live you know yeah. he's a sleepy boy um well he's hot he's tired because it's been hot um this is the project I worked on um for the live I love this project bag it's one of my favorites that you've made me uh, I worked on sampler hill by Brenda Gervais and that is this picture here I love this one and I too sorry it's breaking um I started at the bottom here love this one I let me get the crease out so I had finished the alphabet here in white because then I um you have to fill in all the green for the hill so were you gonna get that all done during the live too yep I was gonna fill in the entire hill here um with the grass the green grass during the live which did not happen right. um so our ambitious goals and then I've also started working on the little lady over here in the corner yes but I love this one it's so so I pretty do. i love that alphabet in that hill that's so fun and pretty yeah it's gonna look really really nice once it's done i think i say that to you every time you show that one that i love the alphabet in the hill but i do <laughs> and the color well, i just so beautiful. love the colors for it it's just like so pretty mine are a little bit brighter than what she has in the picture i don't know if it's just the image um but I had to do DMC conversions for it. So this is kind of what they ended up being. But I'm very happy with it. I think of it as like a springtime yeah. kind of summer stitch. I so I want to work on this more this next month because I love this project. I just like have not worked on it. I don't know why it's like overwhelming. I think because of the hill. I think once I get the little hill done, I'll be like, good. Because then it's just like a bunch of like motifs everywhere. And I even have, you know, one part of the border done already. So like- right. 
I just yeah, have all these like, yeah. Just so. well, just put a thread in here and there. It it, it does add up. It adds up. It does. And um, That's for my up. stitch count oh. on here, let me tell you that. Okay. It is sixteen count toast. Toast. Gotta love Which that. I like. I love this color because it's just a very like nutty. Yes. Color. All right. What's next for you? Okay, Addison. We have our early American project yes. in here together. Yes. This is our other block of the month that we have been working on. And this is Early Americans by Little House Needlework. Thank you. I can never get that right. Me neither. And we worked on block number two, which was John Hancock. What do you want? <laughs> Yay! Yay, we have two done! We have two done! We have Betsy Ross and John Hancock. Hey, look, your yours and mine are flip-flop because of the video. video. I know, that's so funny. <laughs> that is so funny. So I, um, I, I only had one issue, which I... Okay, stop. You're going to knock everything off the bed. Get down from there. The only issue I had was I missed did a color here on the bottom of my roof, but whatever. It's fine. Yeah. Thank you, Apollo. And mine is on 14 count fiber on a whim cappuccino. Mine is 16 count something. Okay. I'm sorry. I have to let Mr. Prince Apollo out the door because look at him. How can I tell him no? He's just standing here whining at me. I know. I get it. I know. They're needy. He's like a two-year-old. Now he'll, and then he'll come back in. Watch. He'll be back. I guarantee. He's okay. Back. He's a problem. Yes. He's Did a Gus problem. Down? He was whining. Um, He's now laying at my feet with his head, like, right next to my feet. <laughs> I, this is me up. I don't know what color this is, but it's a 16 count. Oh, wait, here it is. Cafe Latte. Ah, uh, that's it. Well, at least so he's looking at your feet, huh? It'll be interesting to see because like yours is on 16 and mine is on 14 to just like see yeah, like, the size it, difference maybe. It'll be. Is yours a hand um, dyed? Yes, mine is a hand dyed. Okay. Okay, so what are we doing next? So next month we are doing Martha Washington, which is this gigantic like white house thing. Oh my gosh. Great. All this white oh, right along with our snow glitter village stuff. Yeah, a lot of white. Um, but it's gonna look good because then we will have um an entire row done, which is will. that'll be exciting. And that one's only a three block pattern. three by three, so nine total. Yep. Very good. Okay. Do you still have one more left? I have one more left. I have two more left. Okay, well, you go then. Okay. My next one here, this was another one of my goals. It's in my adorable watering can bag. Um, this was one of my goals. It was to work on a sampler. And the sampler that I chose was, let me find it here. Oh no, oh no. Autumn on Lazy Bear Mountain. By oh. Kathy Bear. And so I. That we started together. Yes, we started this together. Was that last fall? Yeah, it was last fall. Yes, it was. August, September, roughly, whatever. I haven't worked on mine at all. And so I started up in the corner up here. I have um, the whole side of this border done. And then I started working on, I have the tree and the owl. And then I started this house. Give me contacts because, you know, there's not much done. <laughs> so here it is. I love it. I want to work on that one so bad. So I love like this cute little owl and all the bats around the tree. And then I did the gate. This gate goes all the way across the entire pattern. So I did the first page. So that's the, where the first page ends is where that gate ends. So and so I've started the house here that's what this orangey stuff is I love uh -huh. and then like I said I have 
the border all the way on this side done which it's like this little intricate interlaced it's really pretty border. pretty so that's the height of the whole thing what you have that's you the height have. and then the width is like i can't even show you on my screen okay so it looks another like another blanket project you can another say. Blanket. bed sheet <laughs> that's what bed she sheet, bed sheet. it was a, so bed I had a lot of fun working on this I really enjoyed stitching and I'm probably going to stitch on it some more. Um, what count is that? Is that a 16 count? This is an 18 count because um, I wanted it to be smaller. I was going to be too big if I did um, 16 count. And it's just um, like just natural linen. It's nothing special, not hand dyed or anything. Because she used, um, you know, a very light colored background just so everything stands out really well. Yes. Uh, so I chose to do a light color as well. I don't remember what mine looks like. I'm going to have to get that out and take a look at it. Uh, I do know you started in the center. Yes, I do know that because I started in the center where that owl is. I wanted to do, I didn't want to do a border. I wanted to start with something. I started on the border. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. And I have to say though, this is a pattern where she gives you two versions. She gives you like a zoomed out one and then like a zoomed in one. And I'm only using like the zoomed out one. So I have less pages, but I've been using my highlighter to like color, like, oh, I did that already. Like to help me keep count. Um, yes, otherwise it's like impossible. That's a really good um, tip for anybody that's newer. It's so great to make, you can make a copy of your pattern if you want, or use your original pattern, which yes. whatever works for you. Uh, but yes. to highlight things that, um, you're done stitching if you're trying to you can't keep track like sometimes like in a border if you have a big old long border and you're like I don't That's know where I've left off it helps to use your highlighter yep. or if you've got like heavy stitching and you've got like two colors in here or something that are in them they're kind of all over the place it helps to highlight one of the colors so you can see that one color and then yep. to do the one behind it so yeah, mark mark that stuff up so you can see where you are. That is so helpful. Exactly. And I, I specifically used it on the border um, for this case because you could see it's interlaced and I had to like keep track of counting of how many I had done. But it's nice because in the middle there, I just like kept repeating the pattern and I wasn't even making it my pattern. Um, right. But then I eventually had to like, you know, count and make sure I had the yes. right number. But I really enjoyed working on this project. I was only supposed to work on it like one night and I worked on it like three or four nights because I really enjoyed it. It's good. So, nice job. And I've already used one skein of black and I have, wow. that's all I have done. And yeah. I think she did hers on like a 20, you know, like a very small, like a 32 or a 40 count. So I'm probably going to need, she and says you need three skeins. I'm probably going to need like 10. Good. Oh yeah. But it's just black. So well, and the thing is, when they have those higher counts, they only use one strand. Two, so that two. two. I'm using double. And you're using double. So that's yeah. something else to keep in mind when you convert or when you, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at something that's a little bigger like that. And you've done it on a higher yeah. count. They, you're, they're using one strand. So in your that's mind, true. you got to think, you know, and it's okay. And, unless you're like filling in something where it's going to be obvious that your thread is different, a different color or dye lot. Um, so like if you have like, let's say a color, I don't know, 347, I think that's red and you use that and you fill in like this big tomato or something. And then you have to buy another skein to go in the same project, but it's slightly different dye lot. It's okay to do these other things up and around that are diff that are yes. slightly different from that dye lot in the center. So you know, just make sure you have enough for like a big chunk if you have to. Is that Mr. Gus Gus whining at you? Did I just hear that? It is, it is Mr. Gus Gus. I, I have to show you guys again. He's literally just like sitting. Can you see him? Oh, yeah. Look how cute he is. He's Are you a cutie? You're a cutie pie. <laughs> he understands human. He understands English. I fully am a belief that he does. Of course he does. <laughs> He's very smart. Okay. Show okay. me, show me your last project here. Okay. This is my last project. This is my temperature chart and it's my tree. I bought it off Etsy and, um, each branch is a month. So I have January, February, March, the next month, April is done. 
My March hole branch is down a stitch or two. It's off. I got way off, but I got it to work. And just, just to give you an idea of our insane weather. So see this, I don't, it's really hard to see that one gold colored leaf in there. We got into the sixties that day. And that's the only day that's that color so far in this whole year of 2023. So I'll probably never do another temperature chart. I, it, I love the tree. It's really pretty and I'll probably make a pillow, but it's a lot of, it's kind of like that, you know, one thread a day thing where it's a lot of pressure, but it's okay. I'll, I'll it's just a tiny little leaf, but the problem is getting these, all these branches done. A lot of, a lot of brown. Sorry. Now Gus is playing. <laughs> and this, he's playing this. That's what he wants you to do. So this fabric is from Leo and Rock's it's a 16 count peanut brittle. And it's not available anymore because I tried to go back and buy more of it because I really like the color, um, but they don't have it anymore. So, but that's what it is. Okay. Oh. So I have last one, my last one to share, and it is my map of Pochran Hollow. Um, I finished all the ocean. So now I just have my hawk wing left over here. That was my goal was to work on one section. So I finished it and here it is. Beautiful. So I, I filled in all the like light blue ocean down there. That's a in lot. The harbor. That's a lot. It was definitely a lot of fill in, but it's How beautiful. Cute. So you can see the empty space right, right here. That's where his wing goes, which is what I need to finish. Um, yep. I told myself I wasn't going to save the hawk till the end. At least I have, you know, his head done up here, but of course I haven't left. I even have the border done because the border ends right there. Does it end just like, like it, that's it? That's it because the, the, the wing goes right down there. Okay. Um, the wing and the hawk is the border. Right. So, yep, I've just got that left. It's hard to show, but like, look how pretty it is. It's so pretty. It's so pretty. And I love it. Butterfly Lane. How cute. Every time I look at that, when you show that, I look at all the different things in there and I see something I missed last time. I you love know. it. I just, and I so this, it. I started at the beginning of 2020, like right before like lockdown. Um, yeah. And it's kind of like all I worked on during that year. So I think why I have so much of it done. So my goal is to try to finish it this year, um, which I think I'm getting there. So I just have the hawk left. So if I can do a little this month and just keep going a little a month and then I'll be done. And tell your fabric. Oh, my fabric. Is it, it's 16 count Tuscan Sun 8. Okay. And you got that from um, one, two, three stitch, I think. Yes, I did. It's not the, really the called for, um, but I like it on the gold. Everything just shows up really, really well. Love it on the gold. I went and bought a piece of it too, because I want to do that on, you know, because I'm going to do that next week. <laughs> on <the chair. laughs> get right on that. I'm going to get right on that. Oh so, my gosh. That was my last, that was my last one. That was your last one. One chair. Okay. Okay. So now is like one of the fate, my favorite times of the month. And that is, well, I took all my projects out of my bucket because I just showed them all. So my bucket's empty. I get to fill up my project bucket. This is my projects of the month. Your working bucket. My working Here's mine. bucket. Yours is mine's, empty too. Mine's pink and it's empty and I'm ready to fill it up. I'm ready to fill so mine up. We'll go through our like big stock of projects and we'll pick the ones that we want to work on. If we're going to keep some from this month, obviously our block of the months and a couple others, I think that you and I are going to keep, but then we'll add in some new ones. So this is our favorite time of year of time of year, time of the month when we get to set our new goals. Yes. So, well, and I'm we excited. both find it so much easier to um, pull out stuff. We kind of want to work on maybe, maybe not instead yes. of pulling from, you know, 55 or 50, I don't know how many, whips or not yeah whips I have uh, a lot tell Mr. Gus Gus to stop I, I know what is up with our dogs today they're so needy 
they are so needy. So we, we prefer to pull, you know, from there and have a little collection to choose from instead of all of that. Cause it's overwhelming. And then I just look at it all and go, well, I'm, I don't know. I'm overwhelmed. I want to stitch on everything and I can't pick anything, but if I have a smaller bucket then I can pick something you too, right? Yes. Yes. I completely agree. Okay. All right. Let's move on. What do we have next? Is next, we have an exciting purchase that we both have. We both have our DMC um, convert color charts with the actual thread. Yep. Everybody oh. talked about this during the live and said that, we, you know, because Madison was talking about how she goes to Hobby Lobby and stands in the aisle oh, <laughs> trying to pick her colors and people suggested on the live, hey, get the color card with the threads, the actual threads. And so oh. that's what we got. And we love this. I love this. This is going to be so nice to do color changes. And Me color too. Changes. And we needed the real one and it is so nice. It is so worth it because the paper one is like, does not do the colors justice as we all know. Yep. Oftentimes pattern pictures don't always show, you know, exactly as well either. So love it so much. It's going with where I keep all my, my floss. I'm sorry, my yes, I'm having a moment. One of my favorite things now. And the next thing we have to show is our stack of granny squares yes so yep. we each have 24 done right yep we each have 24 and done. so we are gonna do rows of 12 i think we're gonna each do like 15 to 16 rows of 12 yep. um and so we each have two rows done which is super exciting so and i think my goal as well just like you is to do 12 more this next month yeah um because that's an attainable goal for both of us right. as new beginners who also do a zillion other hobbies and have jobs and families and dogs and other things and other so, things and, I, and i'm trying to graduate so right. that's what i have time for this one's really wonky anyway um i did have somebody comment in one of the comments talking about crochet and she said she was having a hard time and i just wanted to say to those out there that are new crocheters it took me this long to really get into a groove and a rhythm of doing crochet. Madison picked it up way quicker, but she picks up everything way quicker than me. Um, so I, for me, it was the coordination of it all. It just was unnatural and it just took like muscle memory. And now when I pick it up, I'm like, oh yeah, okay, okay. And like in looking in some of my blocks, I can see where like I've made mistakes and, but crochet is kind of forgiving um, as you go. So. It's definitely it's, not like cross cross stitch which is not forgiving <laughs> no cross stitch is not forgiving um so just keep trying it and i have how many do we have 24 we have 24 blocks done and it literally really did take me 24 blocks to actually like feel comfortable doing it and not so awkward with it and, and like my hand cramping or you know so just keep at it and try it and practice and really it, it does get better so. It does. And it just seems cliche to say like practice makes perfect, but like, how are you going to get better at something? You just have to, you know, practice. So just be patient and kind to yourself. You'll get there. Just, you know, you're learning a new thing. That's great. So just take the time that you need to learn it. Cause we, oh. we both, you know, are, we're beginners. Like yes, yes. we've been cross stitching since, well, you since February, me since January. So like not, you know, not too long. Crocheting, but, not cross stitching. Crocheting, sorry, confusing the hobbies. That's okay. All right. right. I'm all about that. We knew what you meant. Okay, thanks. Didn't we? We knew what she meant. Okay. All right. So the next thing that we had a goal for was the wool sheep of the month. And here's my block. Here's mine. Madison finally got hers done. I had to twist her arm and make her sit on FaceTime and finish it because she wasn't getting it done. I wasn't going to do it. Then I was like, okay, I'll do it. Both have different backgrounds. Um, there's 12 blocks in this little pattern that we're doing. Um, they're actually embroidery patterns from Buttermilk Basin. They're very, very old. Um, and we decided to make them into wool applique 
pieces and yeah. we'll put them together into a little wall hanging next month that we need to finish is this one with the pineapple yes i only have three left and madison has four left to finish so yes so i'm gonna have to finish another month after you you're gonna have to keep yep. me motivated <laughs> i'm gonna have to force you to get that finished aren't i so super quick though because we just do um like whip stitch um yeah, and it's super very quick. easy to and it's fun to see how ours turned out on like the different backgrounds because yours is like a lighter one yeah and mine is that dark brown and i wish i had sf 101 on the back of these but i'd never put it on the back of these i don't me neither and i don't know why but i'm probably i don't know either. i probably didn't have any we didn't have any at the time because i think we put these together together we were together we we did put them to yeah when we were together if you've never done wool applique it is really fun and it's kind of like paper dolls um because you're putting out all these little pieces and then you fuse them all down onto your background and it's it seriously is like paper dolls it is it's fun it's definitely really fun it is fun well, okay. we think it's fun well yeah it is fun <laughs> um so my other thing that is a goal for me so that project is old that madison and i are trying to finish up the other project I have that I'm trying to finish up that's I've had for a while that I wanted to finish is seven snowmen from all through the night, Bonnie Sullivan. And there are seven snowmen on this big old runner. And I did not put this together, but I was given this and I'm going to finish it. So I'm stitching down each snowman. Janu I'm sorry if there's buzz. Okay. So there's January snowman and then February I no I did one in February and one in March I just started it yeah so my goal is just to do one snowman a month because it's not overwhelming for me that way if I just say oh just do one snowman a month because it literally takes me like half hour to I mean it just 40 minutes I don't know it doesn't even take that long to stitch one of them down but it's just a matter of yeah. doing it and the whole thing overwhelms me if I say oh I'm gonna get that finished well it. it's too much so one snowman a month for me and I'm planning on doing something different with this border. I don't like this border. I don't like the, I think I don't like the color of it or something. It's takes away from the snowman. Um, it does. Yeah. So Quilter in the Woods 62, she did suggest doing like some pennies around here to help with that, which is a good idea. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do yet, but I'm going to change the border. So anyway, I did get my goal done. <laughs> And I stitched Good job. the snowman guy right here. Good job. Thank you. So next month, see, I do have SF 101 on the back of this, which just yeah. gives some body and some stability. It does, especially if it's like fl the flimsy fabric like our other one is on. It just is so helpful. This one's all wool. Even the background, which I don't usually use wool on the background, but this one has it. But anyway. Well, you you didn't make it so that's I why that's, that's true I didn't because wool's expensive actually mm -hmm. okay and then I just wanted to talk about a little the only little bit of quilting I have is I'm going on a quilting retreat with my friend Lynette and we're going in a couple weeks and I did do some cutting out um so I just wanted to kind of give you a heads up on a project that I'm gonna some projects I'll be working on and I'll have I'll have to show you so I'm doing Halo, whoops, by Jen Kingwell. And I have two rows done and I cut out two more rows to take with me. So I'll be bringing that back to show. And these are with templates. Um, so I'll be working on that. And I did some cutting out for that. And then I also have been doing some cutting out on anthology. And there's 300 and, oh no, 182 blocks in this book. And they're rectangle blo blo blocks. I keep hitting this. Um, I'm not sure how many I'm going to make because I'm not going to make all of them. But I do have, I think I have like 54 done or something like that. And so um, I'd like to finish up some more. And, you know, I've cut some out and I'm going to work on this project a bit while I'm gone. So I love this little Civil War, Civil War quilt. So I, I did work, worked on cutting that out. So I did do something with quilting, but not, not with my tops, which is what I really need to work on. For me, the fun part of quilting is 
the top. I don't care. I don't like to quilt the tops and I don't really want to pay somebody to quilt them. The last thing I have to show, um, in my stuff, my mom, I had bought these, some of these fabrics and these little hankies that are embroidered a long time ago because I had intended to put these together in a little quilt and they're just like little hanky type things and she put them together in a quilt and gave it to me wow like last week aren't they fun they're so cute I love yeah. that so I thought that was fun and I thought I would share it with you guys it's kind of big it's not that big that is fun I love that so these are not hand embroidered they're like little hankies or something um, but they're fun and springy looking. So I just wanted to share that, that my mom, my mom made that for me. And, you know, she's, she's older as well. And she still likes to do all the crafts. She does quilting. She does hand quilting. That's how she quilts her quilts, uh, which I never really done. I don't think I ever have. Well, I've done little things, but not anything big like that. Um, and she does embroidery. And she likes wool applique too. So she's she's in her 70s and she likes to do all the crafty things too. Okay, what else do we have? Haul. We have haul. We do have um, haul. Do you want me to go first? Sure, go ahead. How about we just alternate? Oh, alternating is good. Yes. Okay, so I have um, this first one from October House Fiber Arts and it is called Americana Red. Um, so it's kind of, it's a red work little sampler and I love it. I love the cherries down here and kind of all the sewing cross stitch, you know, motifs up here. So I really, really love this one. I love that one too. Love that one too. I love October house. So I have two from October house that I got. Um, I think this one up here, the itch to stitch one is new for a market release. And then um, I think this is older from them, but I don't know. I thought they would be so cute together, stitched up in like some little bowl, but I like those. I love them. Yeah. Um, this one is from Hello from Liz Matthews and it's called The Pumpkin House. I love this one. I love autumn stitcheries anyway. So I love the pumpkins. I think this one is so pretty. Me too. So it'll be fun to stitch. Okay, let's see. This is... This happy morning from Plum Street Sam from Plum Street Samplers. I'm sorry, I have my I keep all my patterns in like a pattern sleeve and so they're all folded out. Um, but look at this. I don't know if it's a barn or a house, but isn't that cool with the pattern in it? It's like a quilting pattern in there. And then look so at the cool. trees down here in the grass. I love that pattern. And then there's the dark version. You like the dark version, don't you? I do. I, I, I think that's the one I, I will do when I get that pattern. Yeah. Yeah. The dark version, it does show up really nice. You'll make me regret if I don't do the same thing as you. Okay. <laughs> um, I also have another one from Plum Street Samplers, and this is called Grimm's Haunt. Oh, yes. Love that. And I absolutely love this one because I love like the variegated house color. Like, oh, look at that. It's so pretty. Again, another autumn one. I love autumn stitches. Okay, so just be curious. What what's the stitch count on that one? Um, it is, it's a hundred and one by ninety two. Hey, so the one I just showed you. So it's so hard to tell how big something is. This one is two fifty four by two forty four. This is huge. Oh my god, that's huge! I thought it was small. No, and yours is small. Oh so you can't tell from a picture like what what's what. Like that's... I thought that thing was. Oh, oh my god that's huge I know right oh my god <laughs> so this one's 1884 stitchery the Ann Perry sampler I saw somebody show this I don't remember I think it might have been um Brenda and the serial stitcher I love that one so much it's yeah. so pretty so cool Okay, and the last pattern that I have is by October House Fiber Arts again, and it's called Sweater Weather. And I think this, it will make a cute little pillow, like the little quilt blocks and the little sweaters. Yep, I love that so one. Too. I've, I've seen that me one. Me too, I love, I really love this um, pattern company, October House. I, I do really like a lot of their stuff. I like their stuff too. 
The last one I have is Daughters of America miniseries from Twin Peak Primitives. And this is the one that I really, really, really love. I just love her outfit with the flag. I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure. I might do the Liberty Bell. I'm not sure about this flower mess. I I don't, I don't it just doesn't appeal to me. Um, but I just really love her. Yeah, she's really pretty. Yeah, she is really pretty. So that was the reason I bought this. Not that I won't do some of the other ones because they are kind of cool, but uh, I cool. really liked her. So, and then the other haul that I have is, did I not bring up? I wanted to, well, oh, here they are. They fell on the floor. Let's, oh, bring, okay. let's blame Apollo. He's not in here. <laughs> let's blame him. So I've shown this pattern before and it's upside down and it's called End of Force Grew. And I've shown it before and I love it. And I wanted to collect the, the threads for it, the floss, the DMC. And um, there are, 50, uh, no, there's 103. So I, I collected 103 different skeins. You know, a couple of them have several skeins that I've, I mean, but those colors are so pretty. But I just wanted to tell say hi to Kathy really quick if she's watching I ran into this lady named Kathy at Hobby Lobby when I was there shopping for these and you know how you just start talking to somebody and she happened to have her cinnamon stars in the cart that she had done and she was buying a frame for it and it was it was just beautiful I was so jealous of it Madison I know you have yours done um but I, it was just so pretty, but I just thought it's so, it's so funny and so neat how, when you're out shopping for something and you can have a connection with somebody that you don't even know, um, and just have a little conversation about your hobby and your love. So she was being sad because she was having thumb surgery though. So Kathy, good luck with your thumb surgery. If, if it hasn't happened yet. Um, so good luck with that. Cause I know you were bummed about that. Okay. <laughs> So what else? Is there anything left we have? I think that's everything. I think we covered everything today. Thank you everyone um, for joining us and, and sticking with us this long. If you have, we appreciate you all. And please like and subscribe if you haven't. And our live, our next live will be live stitch will be Sunday, April 16th at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So please come and join us. We just, you know, just log on. I don't know. Last time it was a little over an hour. I don't know. It was like an hour and 15 or something. We didn't hang out for very long. Yeah. But just for a little time to chat. And if you have any questions, you, you know, we had people talking to each other on there. It was kind of fun. So. Yes. Yeah. It was fun. So hopefully you can join us. But if not, thanks for sticking through, you know, this video while we talk about all of our fun projects we've been working on. We love doing it. So thank you for watching. Yes. Thank you for letting us share with you because we we really do like to. Thank you. Yes. Bye. Don't, don't forget, start all the things and finish nothing. <laughs> Bye. Bye.